Hello guys and welcome. It's Engineering Rebel and in this video I'm going to be changing the brake pad on my RC car. Now just previously I broke the engine in on my RC car and also did a couple of test runs to make sure that everything is in working order. The brakes on the car are still in relatively good shape but a lot of people have been asking me how to change the brake pad on this car. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how. So first we're going to remove the air filter. Next I'm going to remove this throttle linkage and also this antenna sleeve so I can get better access. And this metal piece right here, this is what controls the brakes. So when you brake, this metal piece would get pulled forward and this piece would move about like that and lock up the brakes. So first I'm going to remove this piece which screws on a piece of thread that keeps this little mechanism locked in place. Once I've removed this, then I could remove this sleeve. And also I should be able to remove my antenna sleeve. In order to get to the brakes, I'm going to remove the transmission. And in order to do so, I have to remove these screws in order to get better access to my brake pad. Just like this. Next, I'm going to remove this arm so the transmission can come out a lot more easily. And also I put in tape holding in the front drive shaft so when I go ahead to move the transmission it doesn't fall out of its place. Next, I'm going to loosen the bolts for the transmission and I'm also going to remove the throttle servo in order to gain access to the brake pad. So the transmission is completely out and you can also see that it's a two speed. So we're going to change the little pads, there's two of them on each side, and also the rotor. So I'm going to start off by removing these two screws, and this is what holds the mechanism in place. The new brake rotors and discs that I ordered was actually a package, and it also came with new screws, so I'm probably going to put those new screws on here. And this is the last one, so I'll put these older ones aside so I don't get them confused. And this stuff should all come off. So here's the old ones on this side. And then these are the new ones. Before I put on the new pieces, I want to show you guys how these brakes would work. So obviously you guys have these pieces, the pad and the rotor and the screws kind of holding everything in. But then you also got the little piston just like in a regular car that you would see, a real life size one. And you could see that when I go ahead to turn this piece, the piston comes forward and as that piston comes forward what that's going to do is kind of create like this compression like the squeezing effect on the rotor and that's going to stop the car and when this piece turns back the piston goes back into its little hole so we first put this pad here and then we put on the rotor and it can only go one way just like this and it doesn't matter if it's facing forward or backward it just needs to slide into this shaft and this is where the axle is going to come through. Then next we put the second pad. They're more like metal plates, but you know, I refer to them as pads so it can make a little bit more sense. And then I'm just going to tighten this by hand just enough so it falls into its tracks and I know that it's not going to fall apart when I let go. Now, as you're screwing in the brakes, you want to make sure that both sides are screwed in equally. You don't want one side screwed in more than the other. Now, if one side is screwed in more than the other and there is uneven uh, pressure, then what's going to happen is when you go ahead to brake, you're going to unevenly cause disc wear. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause some serious damage to your disc and you're going to have to repeat this process much earlier in the future. So you want to make sure that you screw these screws in evenly so the pad can wear out along with the rotor evenly and also the life of the brakes will increase much longer. 
just like this. You want to twist it. And you also want a little bit of play in the brakes. You don't want to tighten it all the way because remember, when this piece, this piston is not touching this plate, it's supposed to spin freely. You want to do a little on each side. You want to keep checking. You want to turn the shaft to make sure that there is still room. And then you want to turn this piece all the way. And if the pad still has a bit of play along with the rotor, you want to go ahead and screw it in a little bit more, but not too much. There's still plenty of room. And I reckon that about this much is good. And there's still a little bit of play when I shift this back. Now it's time to put the transmission into the car. So the transmission is back into the car and everything is all hooked up. So now let's test to see if the brakes work. So now the car is able to roll, but if I set the brake, it locks up and you could see it. You could see this lever that I was talking about that pushes the piston, therefore squeezing the rotor. You could see that when I go ahead to pull on the trigger backwards, it triggers the brakes. So thank you guys so much for watching. More awesome videos are to come. So hit that like button and also that subscribe button so you don't miss out. I will see you guys in the next one.